So how do we acquire it? There's only one answer, seek the kingdom. And when I say kingdom, I'm saying seek the king's domain. If you seek the king's domain, you get in dominance, his domain, and, and you say that is the king. The king has the blessing. All I need to do is seek his kingdom first. It shall be given. Let's say you didn't ask. And let's say you're just going to you're gonna go off of his own words, right? So that the king has words that he um, has shared with us. There's this book that we call the Bible. It's technically a multitude of books, 66 of them, right? Could be more, could be less. Could be wrong, but there's a, a multitude of these books that he himself wrote and put some key details as to how to access his kingdom and receive these wealth blessings. I have four documentation, constitutional, legally binding details as to how to acquire wealth. It's, it's legally binding. It's in the constitution of this kingdom. It's legally binding, reliable, and sound because we now know what the correct definition is because we've proven that the world's view of wealth is incorrect. We've proven it by simply going through the process. The word document that the king wrote in his book called Genesis in chapter 1 verse 28, he gives a formula how to live which then creates wealth, which is a blessing given by the creator, by the source. That definition, I, I summarize it right here so that we can properly understand what this king is, is telling us. So I'm going to read it for you first. So I'm going to go to Genesis, the book of Genesis, and we're going to go to 28, right? And it says, and God, creator, the king, blessed them, and God blessed them. So if wealth is a blessing, that means, that's implying that wealth is already inside of whoever them is in the context here, right? If we go back, we know who them is. Them is talking to man. So if we are in fact created beings by a creator and the creator put wealth in us, that means you can never lose wealth because it was given before you were even born. <sighs> this is amazing for me. This is a breakthrough. For me because i realized wait a second i don't need to be i don't need to be going after wealth i don't need to concern myself with acquiring wealth because it's already in me because if you took every single thing away from me and left me with my body and the clothes on my back i would get it all back because i've been given a gift and you cannot take a gift back you can't give a gift back because the gift wasn't yours you can't give what you don't own right you can't so in 20 it says and and god bless them wealth right when we when we see the word bless we can translate that for wealth and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth that's a powerful statement buddy so in a nutshell be fruitful literally means to work so all right some of the worldview got some of it right you gotta work so you still gotta work and Work in this context means to become who you are. In the worldview context, this is why so many of you hate your job. This is why so many of you don't like to work because you're working for someone, something, working to simply be more of who you are. If you're, if you're becoming more of who you are every single day, uh, you're gonna be a pretty happy, happy dude. You're gonna be a pretty happy woman, okay? You're pretty happy. Let me tell you, every day I wake up, I try to become more of who I am every single day. The only way to become more of who I am every single day is if I seek the kingdom. Because I realize that there's a creator involved, the source. He's the giver. If he keeps giving me more wealth, which is a blessing, which is a gift, if he gives me more gifts and more blessings, it's going to reveal more of who I am and how I'm supposed to be operating. So be fruitful, work, become more of who you are, and then multiply that. So he, this is such a good formula. This is the best business plan I've ever seen in my life. Become more of who you are, so you're working in an area that you're already good at because you were given a gift before you were even born. You were giving a blessing before you were even born. Now you discovered the blessing because you seeked the kingdom first. Now you're fruitful, but now you have to multiply. So you basically are investing in yourself. That's what many of the gurus have told me. Invest in yourself. So many of us are trying to what? 
invest in something for someone in somewhere instead of investing in you. Here is the kingdom's definition right here. Invest in you. That creates compound. That creates a compounding effect if you multiply. So many people are trying to grow their money in their 401k. So many people are trying to grow their money in their whole life policy. They're trying to grow their money in their stocks, bonds, mutual funds, when you should be multiplying by investing in you. So you can create this compounding effect. And then replenish is the next third step here in the formula. It's a five-step formula. Replenish simply means repeat till you achieve mastery. When you start mastering the thing, which is you, so many, so many of us, I, I talk to so many moms, so many dads, they don't know who they are. And I'm like, how are you supposed to comprehend an investment if you don't even know who you are? How are you supposed to comprehend the idea of building a multi-million dollar business, having a multi-million dollar portfolio, having a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio, if you have no idea who you are, how, how you operate, how you respond, how you react, how do you proactively handle conflict. So repeating being fruitful and multiplication allows you to master the thing you were working on so that when you have excess, you then put it into these investments for it to then grow and allow rule of 72 to occur. Once you've reached mastery, guess what happens? Now you're in the subdue stage where you are controlling a market. You are influencing the market. You don't own the market, but you influence it. You have the strings. You're like, you're the master puppet. The puppet is the market and you're controlling it because you've subdued your economic environment. You have complete control and influence over your environment. I can say in my household, I have complete control. Maybe not. I'm, I'm engaged. I have a fiance. So, you know, those who know, you know what I'm saying. So I'm just going to act like I have Right. So even if you were to act like it, not fake it till you make it, I'm not saying that. Just talk to the guys here. Right. So if you control your influence, I got to be careful what I say here. I be very, very careful, careful, careful. Influence. Let's not say over people. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Us guys in big, big, big trouble. Let's just say over your bank account, which you may not even have true control over that because when she asks for something, she receives because you're the giver and you. Yeah. So. Darn it. Yeah, this part I'm still working on. Just totally being honest. When it comes to subdue, I'm still working on it. All right, I could be having this totally wrong. But to get to this point, life is, is really interesting in a good way. Really rewarding in a great way. I mean, it's it starts off awesome right here. If, if I could just help more of my clients get in a place of where they can become more of who they are based on who wrote them, based on who designed them, based on who created them, based on who blessed them to begin with. What? Game changer. So be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, control, influence, own nothing. Then you'll have domi dominance. You'll have dominion. You'll be able to dominate and rule. Now, we have to be able to back this up even more, what we're saying here, right? So is there a case study? Because we, we did a case study on here, on these people, 45 to 54 years old, single divorced, widowed, married, with kids in the United States, making between 60 and 150,000 a year, 300, $1 million in debt, for cash flow of five to 5,500. We incorporated wealth in the worldview's definition, abundance of wealth, uh, valuable possessions or money. We figured out how to acquire. We're going to do all this stuff. I'm going to increase their income. I'm going to decrease expenses. I'm going to pay off debt or leverage debt, I'm gonna increase cash flow and they're gonna have more wealth, right? You're gonna do all this stuff, but it's gonna come with pain, worry, fear, sorrow, and death. We know that for a fact. Wealth in the world comes with pain, suffering, worry, fears, doubts. This is why you have to hire lawyers, doctors, accountants, CPAs, strategists, financial coaches, advisors, investment advisors, business coaches, mentors, you got to hire all this stuff just to be able to protect what you've built so you don't lose it. Over here on the kingdom side, we know that wealth isn't the thing. Wealth is simply a blessing. So you can't, you can't get wealth. You can only receive it. You can't go take wealth or, or acquire it. You can't. It's impossible because wealth over here, we already figured out the definition of the worldviews on, on wealth is totally incorrect and false. So wealth is a blessing. It's a gift. I don't even have to work for the blessing or the gift because I was born with it according to the legally binding documents, according to this king who calls himself the creator of all things, the king of kings, is saying in his documented 
writings in the book of Genesis 1, verse 28, that he blessed them, mankind, before they took their first breath. He blessed them. Interesting, okay? Well, now we need a case study to, to prove that because you could say one thing and mean another. So the next one is going to the same book of Genesis and you go to chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. So in, in Genesis 2, 12 chapter 12 of genesis verses 1 through 3 it says now the lord had said unto abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show thee and i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee wealth so that's a blessing on a blessing he was born with a blessing and now he's about to get another blessing and make thy name great so not only am I going to bless you, this God, talking to this guy named Abram, he's going to bless him. He was already born with a blessing, but he's going to bless him again. Then he says he's going to make his name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So this implies this creator, this king, created me, put a blessing inside of me before I drew my first breath. Then I come to discover who my king is, and that's a blessing in and of itself because I just got the formula for wealth multiplication. And this is now implying, according to this case study of Abram, his name will be great and he'll also be a blessing to others. And then it says, and I will bless them that bless thee. So Abram gets a blessing. He will Abram will be able to bless others because now he's a blessing. And God says, on top of that, I will bless them that got blessed by Abram. I will bless them that bless thee. So as long as I continue to be a blessing to others, I will be blessed. And the receiver of the blessing chooses to also bless you will be a blessing and be blessed. So everyone's being blessed. And now here's a promise. Here's what's interesting. Will I bless them that bless thee? It says, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Very interesting. So we have a clear case study here. Are born with a blessing. If this is true, right? If you're leaning towards this, this gotta be true because the worldview is totally wrong. And we went through it. We, we, science prove that worldview's definition is completely wrong. So now I'm airing over here. Now I just got to figure out who this king is, how he operates. And he says that his definition is wealth is a blessing from the Lord. So wealth is a blessing. It's a gift from the king, the giver. The giver gives blessing because when God made man, he blessed them, meaning that we as human beings have the ability to give blessings. Or in other words, give wealth. So we can give wealth. So we now need a few other either case studies or fact. Either we need another case study or we need laws that protect the blessing, right? For, for, for example, you, you and I, we all have driver's license to get on the road and drive a car. In order to validate your driver's license, you would have had to gone to the government, third party, DMV, to validate your driver's license, right? And there are some legally binding documents, contracts that states that Denzel Rodriguez is a legal driver in the United States to drive on the roads. In the event I get pulled over by an authority and they try to challenge legitimacy, my authority to drive on the road, I then pull out my wallet and I show them my ID, my driver's license identification number I, I this 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 blows my mind this so you have this right we take that same concept apply it toward the concept of giver receiver giver is the source of wealth and has the ability to give wealth and because this giver is a creator and created the receiver in his image in his likeness in his character in his authority now the receiver has the ability, true, can we, can we prove that even more? So if we go to another legally binding book, we go to Proverbs 22. This is a declaration, sort of a statement here, is the way that I'm processing this. 
could be wrong, but it does say in Proverbs 22, verse 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. 